New York Times bestselling author Louise Penny has sold more than 4 million books worldwide. Her first 12 novels in the Chief Inspector Gudamash series have been published in 30 countries, translated into 25 languages. This girl is good. Penny's latest book is called Glass Houses. It takes readers back to the fictional Canadian village Three Pines. A mysterious figure appears on the village green, and then... Dum, dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. That's right, Bill. Trouble follows and <laughs> follows and follows. We welcome Louise Penny to the table. Good morning, Hello. Louise Penny. Good morning. I love when she what? sat down. She said, Nora, I loved your golf segment. Nora said, do you play golf? Yes, I was just golfing with President Clinton. <laughs> what, uh, weren't you? Yeah, yes. As one Everybody. does. So as one does, Rory McIlroy, Bill Clinton. Uh, that's pretty nice. Pretty nice company. For <laughs> okay, let's talk about this book. What yes. I think is so fascinating about the inspector, years ago when you started writing about him, you said, I want to write about a guy I would like to marry mm. and the qualities of that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, when I first started designing this series, I didn't actually think, I wanted it to be published. Yeah. I didn't actually believe it would be because it's hard. Uh -huh. So I knew that the writing of it would probably have to be a reward enough because it may be the only reward I would get. So I created a village I would live in. Three Pines. Yeah. Populated with characters I would choose as friends. Mm -hmm. And then it came time to create the main character. And initially I thought, well, I'll make him, oh, a, a man at odds with himself, maybe a, um, some sort of a, an addict of some sort, an, an unhappy fellow. And then I thought, why? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spend I all go down to the local guy. bar if I want that. I, why would I? I'm God. I'm finally God. Why would I create that? I'd also heard that Agatha Christie, and I don't know if this is true or not, uh -huh. had grown weary of Poirot, her main character. Uh -huh. And I always thought that was sad, that the whole world loved this character except his mother. Uh -huh. And I thought, again, if I'm lucky and I become uh, connected to this character, I don't want to get tired of him. So I thought, he has to be a man I would marry. And then Michael enters your life, your husband, for yes. many years, who you lost recently, and you said that writing Glass Houses became a solace for you. It did, because Michael actually was the inspiration for Inspector Gamache. It, it, not only did I create a man I would marry, I actually did marry yeah, him. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, Michael um, was diagnosed with dementia three or four years ago. And when I started writing these books shortly after 9-11, I thought that it would create a, so a safe place for people who are feeling unsafe in the world, as I was. And I get letters from readers saying that reading the books is comforting for them, which means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I never, ever dreamed that I would find so much comfort in writing the books mm -hmm. as Michael was dying. Yeah. And I thought, honestly, I thought once Michael went, I wouldn't be able to write anymore because he was my muse, Cheesy, he was yeah. the champion, exact, the cheerleader, he was Gamash. But in fact, the opposite has happened, and Gamash is so infused with my husband that it, it, it has made him in many ways immortal. Mm -hmm. You write, too, that uh, murder is a way to explore human nature. Yes. <laughs> How so? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're never more ourselves than when we are pushed. Mm. It's easy to be a decent human being when everything is going my way, but what happens when it's not? And that's when we see true character come out. So that's interesting. That's what yeah, I, I want. I think so too. Yeah. 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 yeah we're under stress too. No. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there wasn't. Yeah. I love your origin story as a novelist because you used to have this gig, right? CBC broadcaster, radio, I did. Mm -hmm. and decided I'm going to write the perfect novel. <laughs> And, and I understand that five years later, you had nothing. I your had, husband would come home and say, how's the writing going? And then touch the TV and that's realize right. you'd been watching Oprah. And that's I, I was over, writing Oprah and, and eating gummy bears. It came to the point where Michael stopped asking. You know you're in trouble. Because this ain't going nowhere. This ain't going nowhere. It was like when I reached 35 and mom asked, stopped asking me if I'd met any nice men. Yes. <laughs> so know, what broke you through then? And, and what advice do you have for authors? Well, a couple of things. It, it, I, I noticed that in, in my life, when horrible things happen, they seem to happen out of the blue, but in fact, they don't. It's a, it's, a, it's a cavalcade of smaller events. The same with this great thing. Michael and I moved out of the city into the country. Um, this book is set in the country. I fell in with a bunch of very creative women who were, who were courageous, who had the courage to do what I didn't, and that was to risk failing. Yeah. And I didn't want to fail. That's why I thought it had to be the best book out of the, out of the gate. 
And if I couldn't do that, I was frozen. Well, there's a lot of food in the book, too, which made me there hungry. Is. It made me think you must be a good cook. None I am not. Said is I am a great yeah. eater. Oh, it's <laughs> me too. Well, Louise Penny, congratulations on number 13, right? Lucky 13. That's right. Glass Houses is on sale next Tuesday.